Almost a year ago, I published the video playing Terraria in 1.4 for 24 hours. The comments of this video range anywhere between Oh jeez man, this was a real good video to Hey yo, this sucks, play in master mode, you uh... <laughs> Who had? These kinds of comments have been the discussion in my therapy sessions. And to quote my therapist, Just do it, you pussy. Hour 1 began with our classic naming of the character. We need to make it unique and special for such a unique playthrough. We named it Master Conk. Then proceeded to click the random button until we landed on whatever this is. The title of the new world that was Master Mode Difficulty was... I thought it was pretty fitting, if I do say so myself. We also make the world crimson, because I wanted to get vampire knives like the little cheese ball I was. Spawned into the world, and I already realized the power that is master mode. Right in front of me was a purple slime with 120 health. So the opposite direction I was heading. But whilst exploring, my stress was about to increase because I encountered a vulture. Now normally this enemy is fine, but thanks to master mode, I think it's a new mini boss. Because this literal demon spawn did 39 damage. Oh, I'm dead now. So realizing our situation, we need to get some form of defense as soon as possible. So we traveled back to the desert to mine cactus to get full cactus armor. And the special thing about cactus armor is the set bonus does the damage the mob does you back to them. So it's basically the no you of armor. Then my ancient enemy spawned again, the Vulture, the grand mini boss of master mode. We had an upgrade. There was no way he, he could have us defeat... Yeah, I didn't even like the left side of the map anyways. So we ventured towards the right side of the map. And again, the Grand Master, final mini boss of Terraria, the Vulture. And we finally slayed the beast. Ignore my health, that is irrelevant. Realized there was a bit of iron at spawn, so we mined that for what seemed like a tiny bit of a vein turned into big iron, which later turned into nighttime. And considering I was having an anime battle with a goddamn Vulture, I'd rather not stay on the surface and started very early work on a elevator. It started to for said caves below. The first piece of good loot that we found was a chest in a little house, which was a cloud in a bottle, which I don't think I could ever be happier about. But that happiness was soon about to be decimated by the natural world generation, because in the center of our elevator was a vein of crimsonite. Because why wouldn't there be? So we had to mine around the goddamn vein because it would not let us pass and continue our venture into the deep, which we then discovered the underground mushroom biome, which was actually a blessing in disguise as we found many amounts of gold, heart crystals, and a mace in the chest. Now we have a proper melee weapon that isn't a cactus sword. Along the caving journey, we also found another underground house which contained a regen ring. But most importantly, we got gravitational potions. So I had to make my way back to the surface. So I decided to take the master mode way back to the surface. And when I mean that, I mean I blew myself up trying to mine obsidian. Listen, all right, there was a slime and he knocked me into my own bomb. It's, it was a whole thing. I'm not terrible at Terraria. Luckily, when we spawned on the surface, it was daytime. So we set up a temporary house, basically just putting three crafting stations in a chest and headed into the sky to search for some better loot. Island one contained a balloon. All right, that's pretty good loot. The next island also contained a balloon. The next island, surely we don't get a- God damn it. Luckily, the next island didn't contain a balloon, and the fourth and final island we got to explore, because the potion effect ran out, contained the fletching wings. So I thought it was worth the literal amount of balloons we got to carry the up house. Hour two, we spent half an hour making our house in the most traditional fashion. I mean, our name is Master Cock, and we need a Master Cock to live in. Obviously, the loot is stored in the balls, just like Piers. Warning, Piers not stored in the balls. If you do have pee in your balls, please see the medical professional immediately. After crafting our fantastical house, we headed back into the mines to gain even more loot. We did find a dead man's chest, and luckily, I don't have the mental capacity of a cactus. So, we disarmed the tramps before opening the chest. And apparently, you can get lucky horseshoes from the underground, which I thought was pretty cool, despite the fact that we already had wings, which made the whole item pointless. As we continued throughout the mine, we found gold, and gold, and oh, golly gosh, we found more gold. Please just give me more. At the end of the hour, we reached hell along a swanky minecart drive. We also tried to pick up a hellforge really early, because I thought I was being the big smart, but it turns out I was actually being the big dumb, because you cannot mine a hellforge yet. 
so we headed back to the surface to end the hour. Hour three, we went through all of our loot that we ended up obtaining and then realized we almost had max health. We just needed three more hearts. We also found an apple. I thought this was pretty cool because my name is Apple Backwards, hence the profile picture. We also made a full set of golden armor, so we actually have some form of proper defense and we prepared ourselves for the first two bosses. To continue our preparation for the first boss, that being the Eye of Cthulhu, we went back into the caves to try and finish off our heart crystals. We were only able to find two hearts before almost dying and headed to the right side of the map to try and get a better weapon. That's right, we're heading to the Crimson and my main man is back, the one, the only. <laughs> Then whilst in my house, just big chillin', old mate Big Eye decided to rock up and end the party early. But of course, we would have killed it first try, but we ran out of, um, out of bullets. <laughs> So when the morning arrived, so did the armsmith, and hence we bought as many bullets as we possibly could, and then flattened the left side of the house until night fell. We also made a few potions, and a little side note, if you didn't know, in master mode, potion buffs and debuffs are way longer than they normally are, which is good and a bad thing for obvious reasons. Anyway, time for Big Eye. This time we came prepared and bim bam bom, we defeated him. We killed him two other times just because we wanted to get money. And so at the end of the night, we had enough money to buy the mini shark to finish off the hour. Hour four, we headed back into a crimson hole and started building the arena to battle Big Brain, which when completed, we needed to gather two more heart crystals, which I hear you say, what? Two more heart crystals? But you only need one more. That is quite true, comment section, but we also need to create a heart lantern to make the battle against Brain a little easier. Whilst in the cave, we actually got a little lucky and ended up obtaining three heart crystals instead of two. So we headed home to finish preparations for versing the brain, completely forgetting something. But alas, we remembered what it was halfway through the fight against the brain, and then it was too late. So we tried to battle the brain again, this time doing a tiny bit more preparation. First thing we needed was a grappling hook, which we got from the worst place ever. We also became Toad from Mario. Don't ask me why that's preparation, it just is. Right before the battle, a goblin army appeared, which was honestly pretty straightforward and actually wasn't the hardest. Then, after all the interruptions, I re, re, re remembered what we needed. That's right, I needed alcohol. But more importantly, I needed Molotov cocktails. Now, there is no way we could lose. God damn it. Hour five had us return to the Crimson because that last fight allowed us to obtain a lot of tissue and Crimsonite from all the ores that were killed. The drop rates are extremely buffed in Master Mode, so we're actually able to contain the full Crimsonite armor and pickaxe. And so I got to thinking, how would I be the brain. What am I missing? Oh, I know. I spent an almost literal hour making a bridge from the dungeon to my house. I dubbed the long platform. After creating long platform, I had to create a bloody spine to actually spawn the brain of Cthulhu without smashing the orbs. Henceforth, we dug a path to one that was underneath our house to the right of our elevator. Along the way, we discovered an underground desert temple. All right, I hope for a desert in a bottle. Even a flying carpet would do. Whatever you do, do not give me the Faru. God damn it. We reached the Crimson Altar after that disappointing array and crafted the bloody spine. And then henceforth, we summon the boss, the brain of Cthulhu. And thanks to Long Platform, we rarely got hit and absolutely decimated the boss. Hour six, we went to the jungle to explore and quickly get some easy loot. Along our adventure, we found the goblin tinkerer who died in like 15 seconds. We did not benefit from him at all. I also want to mention the jungle in master mode. In a previous video, I mentioned something which I think is very accurate. Roll it. Maybe they didn't change the jungle. They're just like, nah, jungles are fucked as it is, bro. If you do not believe me, I believe this is a perfectly good supporting argument. So after a while, while of looting, we headed back to our house and crafted the Spectre Boots that we've been missing all this time. So after that and a few other items, we headed back to the jungle to craft a small little arena to battle old mate Big B in. After a tiny bit, we made the perfect arena to battle Big B. The boss itself was actually relatively easy until a little mechanic which activates when Big B gets to a certain amount of HP. It basically gave Big B big muscles because our mini shark did one damage to the bee when 
when it was around one to 2,000 health. After about 10 minutes, we finally defeated Big B. And Big B, well, he was big dead. Arriving home, I was expected to be paraded by all the NPCs for such a grand achievement. But no, a blood moon had to occur and be like, aha, I exist. Luckily, it was only about two minutes long because daytime was just about to approach, which during the daytime, we continued our elevator because at nighttime, it was time to battle old mate Skelly Belly. You see, Skelly Belly is truly a boss that deserves the title Master Mode. This boss has 11,000 HP, and if you do not defeat the hands, the head has a lot of defense, making the mini shark only do one or two damage. But the moment you take down the hands, the head shoots out tracking skulls that will absolutely decimate your health. Luckily, because I am a god among men, we defeated the boss the first time. In hour seven, I kind of forgot to record for about 20 minutes. So here's a bit of a cool drawing of what happened. We got a water bolt amongst other items from the dungeon. Then we went down to hell and got enough hellstone to make molten armor, pick and sword to create the knight's edge. Thank you for watching my amazing presentation. We continue the journey to prepare for the wall of flesh by harvesting the meteor that recently crashed into our world. Then actually properly going down into hell to create a hell platform. It was going to be a long one. Speaking of long, the length of our PSP house was increasing. <laughs> hour eight, we continued to build the bridge that went into hell and created potion preparation for the wall of flesh. This was it. The wall of flesh. The last boss until hard mode. This boss- We died. <laughs> In hour nine, we decided to increase the size of the hell bridge and then also explore more towards the right side of hell. To try and get some more loot that we can sell to make some money, but at the same time, try and search for a guide voodoo demon. Along our journey, we found a baby shadow chest mimic. So old mate Ronald joined us on our journey. We headed to the surface to do some fishing so we could actually get some hard bone ores nice and easily when we do get into the difficulty. Unfortunately, the only fish that we did get was bass. We went back to hell to try and explore and actually find a guide voodoo doll because they're exceptionally rare. And then we finally found one. So we headed home to prepare for the final fight. Potions are ready. Guide voodoo doll in hand. Water bolt and meteor armor equipped. We headed down down into hell, ran to the very left-hand side of the map where we finally finished our bridge and we dropped the voodoo doll into the lava. The war flesh spawned and we shot the war flesh, running, dodging lasers, trying not to get eaten and consumed by the nummy worms. It tried to gain on us with one final rush with its laser cannon shooting constantly. We were firing the water bolts and the war flesh was defeated. Our game entered hard mode. With that, I realized a god damn crimson sport basically next to our house. Why does this game forsaken me? Yet the pain does not end there. Every goddamn normal mode enemy decided to go, hey, I'm stronger now. Not only do their health increase, but so does their damage. So basically your run of the mill green slime has become a mini boss. But of course we headed towards the crimson to do our classic traditional route of let me smash those goddamn altars and begin the cycle of mining the ores. Hour 10 began as we continued the trend of mining the hard mode ores, beginning the mining sequence of us getting ocarinium. We then gained a full set of adamantite armor after about half an hour of mining the hard mode ores, and we started to get ready to get the weapon we would use against the first boss of hard mode. So we headed directly for hell to farm souls of light. The reason why we were in the hell biome and we could actually obtain the souls, hell was unironically the easiest biome that we could actually live in. This should show you how goddamn hard hard mode master mode actually was. After a short while of farming mobs, we finally got 15 souls that we could craft key of light, which we put in the chest to verse the hallowed mimic. Now, my monkey brain decided ooh, ooh, I use mini shark to defeat master mode mimic. It would be easy, yes? Apparently, I was extremely wrong because not only does the master mode chest have 11,000 health points, but my mini shark does one to two damage per bullet. And I was using silver bullets. So we took about 15 to 20 minutes versus the Hallowed Mimic. But alas, I thought maybe, just maybe, we could actually beat it. It was so low, but Monkey Brain decided to make a guest appearance yet again because I got double hit and got obliterated by the Mimic when it was about 1,000 HP left. I hate this game. Hour 11, we went back down into 
to hell. This time farming the souls of night to try and get 10 of them. Instead of actually crafting a key, we had to get a new weapon. That was the Onyx Blaster. And to quote, I'm about to fuck some shit up. We then went back to farming souls of light to get another Hallowed Mimic. Now, the first Hallowed Mimic we fought against was way easier, might I add, but dropped this goddamn crystallized butt plug looking ass. So it was soul farming yet again. The second time we got the bow. So finally we got the boss killing weapon. And then to finish off the hour, we made the adamantite mask to increase our ranged damage. Hour 12 started off by farming wyverns and harpies, souls, and potentially a giant harpy feather, which obviously we didn't actually get. Yeah. Next, we went to the Howard biome to farm unicorns and pixies so we could craft Howard arrows. So we could face the destroyer with a lot more ease. We also killed the war flesh yet again to try and get the ranger emblem to increase our ranged damage. Not only did we get the emblem, but we also got the master mode mount, the goat. And let's just say, goats do be going brr. After that, I felt confident. I was ready to take on big old mechanical worm, the destroyer. Just spoilers, by the way. We were not prepared at all. Not only was I not prepared for that boss, but I was not prepared for these goddamn mobs to start spawning whilst actually battling it. Like, what is this shit? So, of course, we lost our first battle. We then headed towards the jungle to start our future plans for an arena against Old Mate Plant, but also making a low-key life root farm to help us in our future battles. After farming souls and potions, we were prepared to first the good old mecha worm again. And guess what happened? And we died. We were quite close, but I then realized what we were missing. We were missing better wings. I still had goddamn fletching wings free hard mode. I just want to congratulate you on making it halfway through. We have reached hour 13, so give yourself a pat on the back because I sure did. Hour 13, we went straight to the Sky Islands to farm harpies in the hopes that we would get the giant harpy feather. Of course, wyvern after wyvern spawned in, and with each wyvern spawned, my brain became dumber and dumber. With each death, I increasingly Shit. grew angrier to each wyvern. Then finally, after like half an hour, 100 feathers and a raging hate boner for wyverns, we got the giant harpy feather. So throughout the day, we got all potion materials needed for the big fight. Which after all that struggle, death, pure suffering, and a goddamn restraining order for wyverns, we defeated the first boss in hard mode, the destroyer. Hour 14, our monkey brain came back yet again uninvited. I forgot to hit recording for about 10 to 20 minutes. Don't worry, you did not miss out on muck. It was basically just killing sharks for shark fins to make the mega shark. We spent most of the hour trying to gain souls and fishing items for potions to go up against Skelly Belly Prime. We then went to battle him, and of course, Skelly Belly Prime wasn't too happy that we killed his little brother first go. So he decided to take out his rage by employing greatest enemy of all time, a regular possessed armor that did way too much damage for its own good. What an absolute pussy ass bitch. It was then daytime, so we did the potion and soul grind yet again to prepare for our rematch against Skelly Belly Prime. We all also went to the jungle to continue the life root farm and the arena building, which as it paid off because we got one whole life root to add to our arsenal. The night time fell. It was time for me to take revenge on all mate Skelly Belly and also watch the tracks. The fight, which had me switching between crystal boards and icor boards, and we finally struck down the mechanical Skelly Belly. Hour 15, we decided to farm some more crystals for boards in preparation for the twins, and we found the queen jelly. So we decided to go up against the queen slime since we had not done it yet. We also found out that the queen slime would actually exit the hallowed biome without becoming enraged. So we just went, oh, come here, come here, to our big long ass platform, which made the fight basically the easiest thing on the goddamn planet. Speaking of slimes, we also decided to go up against the king slime because I realized we had not done that yet. So I summoned him, but apparently he has this special mechanic where he will pull a dad on you and not actually show up. So yet again, we had to craft another spawner, but this time he actually did show up, unlike my uh, real dad. 
We then briefly went to the jungle to try and get more life root, which we got a cheeky two more to add to our arsenal and a death to top it all off. Continued for the rest of the day, we farmed fishing for potion materials until nighttime came. We could finally face the last mechanical boss, the twins. Twin battle was slightly challenging, only because I had to dodge those little green fireballs that Spasmatans emitted from his eye. As soon as he went into his second phase, the fight became the easiest out of the three mechanical bosses. From the twins dying, we crafted the pickaxe axe, mechanical minecart, and a full set of hallowed ranged armor. And we headed off to the jungle to farm chloroform, but I forgot old mate Spelunky, so we had to head back home real quick. We also decided to craft the Excalibur, a cheeky melee weapon just in case any monsters in the jungle decided to get close. For the remainder of the hour, we went through the jungle mining chloroform, gaining heart fruits, and trying to get the old mate turtle shells to actually drop. And we even found the entrance to the jungle temple. We began hour 16 by actually heading home after our long trip mining Coraform. And then I actually remembered we could craft the true Excalibur with said Coraform that we mined earlier. Yet we could not craft the true Knight's Edge quite yet, as we were missing two souls of might. Really, Terrarium? You're gonna make me miss out by two? We got our last turtle shell needed for a full set of turtle armor, and then we headed back to continue our work on creating the arena to verse plant. When turned nighttime, we had to battle the destroyer yet again and gain the literal two souls we needed to craft the knight's edge. Luckily, we did beat it and we got a new pet from the master mode item list, which we named Giltar. Giltar is a worm that likes to spiral around me constantly, not thinking about anyone or anything because Giltar does not care about your problems. Karen. Finally, with the two souls we obtained, we were able to craft the true Knight's Edge, and we finished off the hour by heading back to the jungle. In hour 17, we continued to create the battle arena against Plant, and then remembered about an item that will help us speed up the process. This item is known as a calming candle, which is basically the opposite of the water candle and actually reduces enemy spawns. Whilst creating the arena, a pirate invasion occurred. I thought the invasion was going to be easy, but I had to use my cheesy method and just stay in my house to destroy the Flying Dutchman. Upon the death of the pirate invasion, we actually obtained the Black Spot, a master mode mount, which was a flying pirate ship that was supposed to go really fast, but because of a recent patch, it is actually halved in the speed that it was. So I think I'll stick with GOAT for the time being. For the rest of the hour, we headed back to the jungle arena to work on it. We also put down sunflowers, decreased mob spawns, and also a potion of calming. How painful these monsters were. I literally had to go fishing in a sky or to decrease these mob spawning because they were so annoying. Hour 18, we headed into the underground crimson to attain enough Icor to craft the piss book. Luckily along the way, we got a mimic to drop the philosopher's stone, which we created the charm of myths later on. We headed back through the jungle to obtain rest of the life roots to max out our HP to 500, but we only ended up getting enough for 485, which I was still pretty satisfied with. We headed back to home to get ready to fight plant, but realized it was a full moon, which then spawned in the monster, the werewolf, Rawr. which we needed desperately. Two reasons. One, he dropped the bandage, and two, he dropped the moon charm. If you know what they use for, you're a big boy, and you deserve a gold star. We actually were able to obtain the bandage, but not the moon charm. Luckily, the bandage was the last item we needed to craft the ink charm, so we could craft the ink shield. Then finally, after hours of crafting the arena and dying to those stupid hordes, why did we went up against the plant with a finished box. We were prepared. We had a combination of the piss book and chloroform boards and the mega shark to attack plant. But when plant enters his second phase, the plant has a new ability. Lots of miniature plants come out from every point the plant exists. So we had to switch from the chloroform boards to the icor boards to keep up that debuff without switching weapons and focusing on dodging the plant's attacks. But also so the boards wouldn't target the miniature plants. I also believe that the miniature plants regenerate, but don't quote me on that. And in the end, we were able to defeat plant first try. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please type how many times I said plant in the comments below. Hour 19 began as we entered the wizard dungeon, which was wizardy as ever. We also happened to pick up a titan glove, which you wouldn't believe the amount of goddamn star cloaks I actually obtained throughout this playthrough. We only cleared out a small amount of the dungeon because I wanted to start a solo eclipse as soon as possible. And so we headed back home as soon as we obtained the tablet. We cleared up our inventory and luckily it was still Still nighttime, but almost daytime. We were able to activate the solar eclipse as soon as it turned daytime. 
let's just say fun was the last word in my vocabulary to describe this event. If you did not know, the solar eclipse lasts one whole day, also known as 15 goddamn minutes. And we only got one Mothron to spawn. I was thinking, hey, maybe it will at least drop one broken- It didn't drop any broken hero sword. Then we headed back to the jungle dungeon when it turned nighttime. Along the way, we found the Empress of Light spawner. So my monkey brain came back and went, oh, kill. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, we didn't really last too long. So after that little waste of time, we resumed our mission. We headed towards the wizard dungeon. We finally explored through the whole dungeon this time and it found the boss room, which we then began setting up for the boss fight. But halfway through, a pirate evasion occurred. And then I thought, surely by starting a solar eclipse, it would actually cancel out the pirate invasion. Nope. Though by some stroke of luck, Mothron did spawn and said Mothron not dropped one. Not two, but three of its drops. That's right, it dropped the Eye of Cthulhu, the wings, but most importantly, the Broken Hero Sword. So as soon as we got said item, we headed straight home and were able to finally craft the Terra Blade. The emotion I would describe is big happy. We also were able to obtain a Desert Key during the Solar Eclipse. So after the Pirate Invasion and Solar Eclipse, we made our way towards the dungeon to obtain the White Tigery Boy. We actually didn't name him throughout this entire playthrough, so our uh, comment section, do your thing. Hour 20, we went back towards the dungeon to summon and fight the golem, which surprisingly, we killed the first time. We also decided to verse the boss again because we didn't get the pixel the first time. And unfortunately, we did not get it the second. So as three being the magic number, we got it on the third time and proceeded to head home to craft some beetle armor. Now for the rest of the hour, I'm actually going to be blending it with hour 21, which we tried to gain some end game accessories. First of all, we need to get the flesh knuckles. But for some strange reason, Terraria RNG was like, because it took us a whole goddamn hour to get this one accessory. The amount of life sucky figgy suck me off rods, bro, that I actually obtained is absurd. And finally, after a literal death threats for Crimson Mimics, we actually obtained the flesh knuckles. We combined it with the paladin shield from the dungeon, craft the hero shield. Hour 22 began, and I just realized it decided to copy hour 21 because we tried to get the ninja climbing gear, which we needed two items from the enemy type known as Bone Lee. And it took another goddamn hour for us to drop his tabby and black belt. I thought that drops were supposed to be massively increased in master mode, but oh geez, I forgot the part where it said it doesn't affect Elpa. Hour 23 and 24 is another merger hour because it took us that goddamn long to receive the rest of the items, potions, and materials needed to face the Lunar event. We killed the Lunar Cultus with supreme ease, but the word ease was completely decimated from my vocabulary as we took on the solar pillar. The amount of times I died could fill up a graveyard the size of the planet. These goddamn meatballs do not mess around. But finally, after struggle after struggle, we defeated the solar pillar, obtaining the solar eruption, which we then began to take on the Nebula Pillar. Not quite as hard as the Solar Pillar, but hard nonetheless because of these goddamn laser teleporting pieces of shit. Alas, we defeated the Pillar. We then went on to the Vortex Pillar. Again, relatively hard, but not hard as the previous two. We defeated that with relative ease, and then there was only one Pillar remaining, the Stardust Pillar. That was the easiest Pillar. We defeated it with basically not even breaking a single sweat. And then that's it. End game of Terraria. The literal minutes were counting down until 24 hours of footage were achieved. I was stressing. This was the only chance. The only chance to defeat the true final boss of Terraria. My destiny to complete the game. <laughs> Well, that was fun. <laughs> so yeah, if you couldn't tell, we couldn't actually uh, defeat Old Mate Moon Lord in the 24 hours. If this video hits like, I don't know, 50,000 likes, we'll do a live stream where we actually try and defeat it in master mode. I want a proper ending and then maybe I'll chuck the video on the second channel or something. Subscribe to second channel, subscribe to VODs. This was actually all streamed on my Discord. So if you want to be a part of stuff like this and help me out a lot, because you guys did. Join my Discord, smash like, subscribe. I've said everything, follow my everything, bruh.
Smash like if you want another 24 hour. Tell me what to do and comment. Bye!